Welcome to Christian Statesman. I'm your host, Zach Wagner, and this is episode 131, How to Anonymously Kill 7 Billion People. There's a curious phenomenon in the distant fields of rural Georgia. They are known as the Georgia Guidestones, erected by a mysterious man in 1980 under a pseudonym. They are taken, in effect, as the Ten Commandments for the New World Order, the guidelines for a one-world government run by wealthy elites. They are seen by the enlightened, so-called, as the only solution to save the planet and humanity for the future. They are erected and engraved on 20-foot tall stone monuments in eight languages. It is the first two guidelines that concern us most. The first guideline states that a world population should be maintained at 500 million or less. The second, purely a eugenicist distorted dream, is to guide reproduction wisely to maintain fitness and diversity. In short, the powers that be believe that the planet is too crowded and all of us useless people are the problem. So how can they achieve that goal of 500 million, roughly a 93% reduction in current population numbers, and not make it look like they were the cause of it? Answer, create a pandemic. Very informed sources intimate that the main goals of the current pandemic are to grab control of all levers of power and to invoke the reduction of population. In doing so, the push towards the insidious guidelines published decades ago is now fully underway. The virus becomes the perfect foil. Never mind that the cure may be far more harmful than the disease. The goal is to start culling the herd before the cattle awaken to the fact they are being led to the slaughterhouse. A recent piece of intel has come across our desk suggesting that part of the reduction plan is to create so much corruption, so much mayhem, and so much disorganization within civilized countries that the people themselves rise up to upset the apple cart, essentially running their corrupt overseers out of office and seeking to right their own ship, the equivalent of stampeding the herd. Of course, this would lead to anarchy, tribalism, and widespread civil conflict which would rapidly accelerate the casualty numbers. Fingers would be pointed in many directions. It was the Republicans. It was the Democrats. It was Fauci and his henchmen. Hang them all. So they'll cry. What the elite are counting on, as plagues rage through populations and governments teeter on the brink of collapse, is for the people to rise up and finish the job. For those who hate corruption, this might sound attractive. But, as with any good cause, organization and coordination is the problem. Getting vastly different swaths of people to coordinate and restore representation in an orderly manner is basically impossible. The various competing power centers would be striving for their own agendas and mayhem would be sure to ensue. A hard, cold reality is the only temporal answer to all of this would have to come from an organized force that could be coordinated at a high operational level. There is no other viable force than the United States military. Yet, even in this structure, there is the potential for chaos, as various levels of command may be aligned with competing goals, loyalty to the existing, if illegitimate, structure or loyalty to restoring a more constitutionally oriented structure. The devolution so many Trump proponents and patriots pine for may not achieve the results they envision. In the end, the outcomes are similar. We are witnessing the disassembling of Western powers with a one-world government waiting in the wings for the other shoe to fall. It is fascinating that the powers that be are almost inviting insurrection from the masses. It seems they are even counting on it. Organized insurrection is never a sound plan or a good idea. Our own revolutionary war was more luck than organization with a regular dose of divine intervention to bless a ragtag group of colonists to somehow triumph over the greatest military power of the era. If we were to succumb to these temptations, the evil agenda would be close to success. Eliminate billions and have us be the errand boys for such atrocity. At the higher and arguably more realistic level, we need a healthy dose of divine intervention now to prevent this progressively not-so-hidden agenda from realizing success. We need to see the hand of God revealed and the blessings of the heavens to stay the yoke of bondage being prepared to be lowered onto our necks. 
But are we worthy of that heavenly assistance? Have we repented enough personally and as a nation to effectively call down the powers of heaven to our aid? That may be the most relevant question of all. But rest assured, as the agendas in play move forward steadily and insidiously, they seek by their very nature to frustrate the plans and purposes of God for his children here on earth, subtly hidden or not. The old mantra, it is not nice to fool with Mother Nature, may pale in comparison to the attempted effrontery to God in these circumstances. Seeking to thwart the very fruits of his creation is beyond playing with fire. It is invoking the wrath of something and someone far more focused and principled. The more the evil elites try to hide their intentions, the more God himself may cast them into the open light. Thank you for being with us. Please subscribe, and as always, have a blessed day.